Tourism for the Vermont Chamber of Commerce. And again, thank you for inviting me to come here today. Um, as you most, some of you might already know, the Vermont Chamber of Commerce is a statewide organization. We have approximately 1,500 members, and over 45% of those members are actually in the uh, tourism and restaurant industry. The Vermont Chamber and its restaurant uh, members uh, really do support good nutrition. We understand the concerns between the links between obesity, chronic disease due to poor eating decisions. Restaurants in Vermont furthermore have and will continue to evolve and offer healthy choices for their patrons and their children. After speaking with many of our restaurants, um, this came up a number of times and we actually spoke about this and I've been working with the American Heart Association, we've spoke to them previously. I went out and actually spoke to a number of our different restaurants. What I really found, which was um, very nice to hear, that mostly all of them are actually offering healthy options now. Um, they're offering smaller portions, healthy options, we know that the local movement is really alive and well in the state of Vermont, and we really want to applaud our restaurants for doing that. Um, we also want to make sure we're very careful to not prohibit them from offering the foods that they want, especially on a seasonal level. That helps support our farmers. It supports the entire industry of Vermont. Um, we also know that a lot of them are already offering milk and non-sugary items for their children's menus. Um, so what I'm here today is um, really to ask you, so in, <coughs> instead of implementing S-70, which is a mandate. Um, we were just asking if this might be an opportunity to work in partnership. Um, so my suggestions were really work in partnership with some of the Vermont restaurants to add healthy items. You know, going out and out and actually talking to them and saying, is there an opportunity? Can we actually add on? These are the beverages that were being recommended by the Heart Association. This will help Vermonters across the state. Um, same thing with meals and really, really offering them healthy options. Um, I truly believe that if we did an outreach with the uh, education programs, with our connections, with the American Heart Association, with the National Restaurant Association, with our support, with all of the local chambers, we would really be able to do a really good education partnership outreach <coughs> program to these restaurants, asking them to start really taking a look at all their menus. And when they go into the effect to start making up new menus, to really consider what's in the best interest of Vermont's children. Um, we feel that this partnership would be a better alternative to doing a mandate. And so, therefore, we really do prefer education and partnership over that. So I'm here to say, if that's an opportunity, we certainly would support it. We would do outreach. We would certainly help with getting that message out to all of the businesses throughout Vermont. So thank you very much, and happy to take some questions. I was surprised something I found in my mailbox that may start making me feel a little differently about this bill was this one put up here and it talks about all the groups or all the chains that have already signed on to this sort of stuff. Uh, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Dairy Queen, IHOP, Applebee's, Jack in the Box, joining Subway and Panera. They already do this. Mm -hmm. And so I started in my own mind thinking along the lines that you're talking about of saying if so many companies have already done it, why are we mandating this? Uh, which goes against certain principles of mine anyway, that, uh, as far as mandating something. So I, I, uh, uh, how should I say it, I just wanted to applaud your uh, appeal here to possibly do this type of outreach and education as an alternative to, let's say, a bill that would mandate something. Super. Right. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, Rhonda, did you provide testimony on the Senate side? I did. This bill? Okay. And the same suggestion? Um, I actually offered quite a few suggestions. Um, that was on the Senate side when it first started out was actually about the whole entire menu. Um, and I truly believe the same thing, um, that if we worked with the restaurants in a partnership and education process, we could get, in fact, again, most of them are already doing it, but the ones that aren't, we could certainly give them an education program Again, the Heart, Heart Association has done a great job of formulating all of these different menus, and they went out to about 20 plus restaurants and said, would you support these items? And they all agreed. So if we find that when we're approaching businesses that they are more than willing to take this on and actually make changes, then I think that's an opportunity to say, let, let them go and do what they need to do. If we have a problem down the line, then we could certainly look at this. But giving them the opportunity to raise up to the level that we're asking for, if they're not already doing so, I feel it would be a much better approach for the businesses. They're all being impacted quite a bit with mandates and changes and things that are happening in this industry. And it's just cumulatively. 
And although it doesn't seem like it would be a large cost for a business to make a change in menu, I'd prefer to have them when they're ready to do the menu changes, do the menu changes instead of a forced um, menu piece on there. Because there is a cost involved with that. Okay. Did you say you sent something in to us? I did not. I apologize. Oh, okay. um, there's some typos in here. I'll have that to you before the end of the day. Yes, Wasn't there one uh, <coughs> Chamber of Commerce organization that did say that they were supportive of the bill? That's what. Um, I, um, I, what we're hearing from the Lake Champlain Chamber, okay. um, we okay. ourselves have not had testimony from any business group. They okay. were all, as well as the um, <coughs> tourism group, they all seem to have been busy last week when we uh, took I just stuff. thought for some reason that <coughs> one had, which surprised me. I mean, quite frankly, so I'm happy you're here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you it. Much. Thank you for your time today. Uh, um, <coughs> the next person that's on will be on the phone. It's a really interesting picture. requirements for children's meals, which, as you know, came over from the Senate as uh, healthy drinks. Um, and so we would appreciate uh, hearing the comments of the Lake Champlain Chamber. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, you were cutting out a little bit, so let me know if you have trouble hearing me. Okay. Um, so, uh, for the record, Kathy Davis with the Lake Champlain Regional Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't be here in person today. I always like visiting your committee. Um, so, uh, as 70, as it was passed by um, the Senate, um, which uh, is looking at the fall beverages, uh, the Lake Champlain Chamber uh, supports that bill as it was passed by the Senate. Um, we had concerns with the um, initial bill that was introduced um, in the Senate, but think that what was passed um, is a good sort of step in um, addressing these issues and one that um, is manageable for our members. Um, and just as background on the chamber, um, the Lake Champlain Chamber has about 1,500 members concentrated in, in Northwest Vermont. Um, the majority of our members, about 85%, have fewer than um, 20 employees. So the majority of our members are, are small, locally owned businesses. And I'm happy to go into further detail or answer questions, but that was all I had. Well, Kathy, your um, testimony is um, very timely because while uh, <coughs> Just before we called you, one of the members said, doesn't um, one of the chambers support this bill? And I'm like, I don't know. We haven't heard from them all. And then there you did. Carl. Yes, just a, a question. So out of your 1,500 members, how many are restaurants? <coughs> I don't have it at my fingertips, but my guesstimate is somewhere in the 50 to 50. Um, and if you bear with me, I can pull up our database and give you, well, while I perhaps answer another question, I can wait while my hair turns green, our database opens, um, <laughs> and pull that specific number for you. Um, while, while she's doing that, does someone have another question for Kathy? Hi, Kathy. It's Representative Keith. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. So the effective date is July 1st, 2018. Yeah. It's been suggested that there's 
can create inconvenience in, in the least when uh, the necessary turnover of menus and well not just the menus but the print, printing of the menus themselves has that is that something you guys have looked at um we did not um i think in, uh, i think that would, that's probably a fair point um and perhaps um if it was considered you know a friendly change um maybe looking at something like september 1st my guess is that um a lot of folks would would make this if it, make this change you know as quickly as possible um but a little I, I would always prefer to give our members extra time to find out about the requirement and then implement it versus having somebody sort of unwittingly run a foul um, you know just because they haven't heard yet okay uh, just one more question so I hadn't thought of this so you just said that but how how would a restaurant know that the law had changed in it's now April 1st 90 days from now? Maybe, um, maybe that's a question for our committee more than you, but yeah. how, are, how are restaurants, how are your members typically brought up to speed on a chain such as this? Um, we always do our best to get the word out to members when there is not, like a deadline specifically looming. Um, so um, I'm trying to think of, of recent. Um, so with um, the ban the box law that was put into place, a, I think two years ago now, we had supported that one, which was removing the question about criminal background checks from employment applications. And so we did um, provide communication to members um, to make them aware. Of course, unfortunately, from our perspective, all businesses um, aren't members of our chamber. Uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, I think that there, there can be a gap in terms of how those other, you know, restaurants that may not be a member of an association <coughs> find out. Um, you know, hopefully, again, um, if there's, uh, I don't, I can't remember if there was enforcement attached to this language, but again, like, um, if there was, you know, the, the, if something, if a restaurant was found to have not been, um, following these guidelines, that it would be an opportunity for education for them and, and bring them into compliance. Okay, thank you. Um, now, Kathy, we've had to answer all these questions. Have you got a better guesstimate as to the number of um, food establishments and restaurants that are members? I am, one moment. Thank you very much. If there are no more questions, Kathy, thank you very much for taking the time out and testifying. Appreciate Thanks it. Thank you very much. Take care. Thanks. Um, committee, on your list, we have Dr. Lynn um, Belvin. Uh, she's going to be last. Um, so, uh, Jennifer Costa. Hello, how are you? What? I do have. Um, a few handouts. I've submitted testimony as well, but if anyone wanted hard copies, I have three. Okay. I bet you some people do. There's a few handouts. I just have some additional information and then the testimony. Don't. Oh, oh. <laughs> we're, we're just pulling up your testimony sure. the American Cancer right. Society. Mm -hmm. Top. Top one? Top so one. Yes. So I'm Jennifer Costa. Um, thank you for having me today. Government Relations Director for the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. And I'm here to talk to you about S70 today. The Cancer Society Cancer Action Network supports S70. We believe that it is a compromise that not only makes sense, but is a critical step 
to easily addressing a huge culprit in childhood obesity. Now, we would love to have the nutritional standards attached to the bundled kids' meals, but if we cannot, we strongly feel that removing the sugary beverages as the default option for the children's menus is a step towards reducing obesity and the risk for chronic diseases like cancer. Some of you may wonder, what's, why is cancer involved in this? What's the link? For most Americans who don't use tobacco, the most important behaviors to reduce the cancer risk are weight control, dietary choices, and physical activity. We know that excess weight increases the risk for at least 13 different cancers, including breast cancer, colorectal, uterine, pancreatic, ovarian, esophageal, and liver cancer, and that's just a few of the 13. Now, when it comes to kids, nearly one in three children are currently overweight or obese in the US, and we know that childhood um, overweight and obesity now follows them into adulthood, those behaviors. The majority of children consume diets that are too low in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. The um, Vermont Health Department's Youth Risk Behavior Survey found that 76% of adolescents in Vermont do not eat the recommended five daily doses of fruits and veggies, and their diets are too high in sodium, saturated fats, and added sugars. As a first-time mom, I'm just now learning uh, that pretty much everything at a restaurant and dining out becomes a fight. <laughs> so I am asking you, why not make just this one simple choice easier for parents who are just trying to enjoy a meal out? One less fight is uh, a few minutes of, of peace at the, the dining table. Uh, sugary drinks are the leading source of added sugar and one of the leading sources in calories in Americans' diets. Nearly 40% of all added sugars come from sugary beverages. And the most recent US Dietary Guidelines in the World Health Organization recommend reducing added sugars uh, to no more than 10% of our caloric intake. So just for some perspective, a 2,000 calorie diet, that would be 200 calories coming from added sugars. An average 12 ounce soda has 100. So that's, that's half coming from just that one 12 ounce beverage. Um, children ages 9 to 18, what we know is that they consume 17% of their calories from added sugar. So that's almost double what's being recommended by the World Health Organization and the U.S. Dietary Guidelines, contributing to kids being overweight and obese and increasing their long-term risk for cancer. Obesity rates have tripled among our children in the US in recent decades. And one study even concluded that the consumption of sugary beverages accounts for 20% of weight gain in this country in, in kids from 1997 to 2007. I know that I'm throwing a lot of numbers out there. Um, it is all in the, the testimony as well. Um, but why we are so worried about the link between sugary drinks and weight gain is because through our research at the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network, we recognize that excess body weight not only increases the risk of cancers coming back, it also decreases the likelihood that someone will survive multiple cancers. Um, and I did want to just address, as I was listening, um, a final note on the potential costs of printing menus, and this is less from the Cancer Society perspective and more from my own personal perspective. I worked in restaurants for 10 years before I got into this job and a previous job. Um, I find that most restaurants, the, the menus are printed and they just slide in. So it, you know, while I respect the, the, the testimony of others, I'm not sure how much of a cost increase that would be. And if you've ever been to, if we're specifically talking about kids' menus, usually they're a photocopy with like the connect the dots or an activity on the back that are disposable anyway. So we're talking about Xerox. It's, I don't think that a lot of restaurants in the majority probably print their menus rather than like the, the Cheesecake Factory super flashy books that are, you know, 100 pages that need to be reprinted. So I thank you for your time. For all of these reasons, the American Cancer Society urges you to take this critical step in protecting our kids 
by the simple step of removing sugary beverages from bundled kids' meals. Thank you. Carl. Yeah, I just, uh, you made this comment that just to prevent one more argument or something like that at the table. I mean, to me, again, I'm speaking as a parent also, that, uh, that to me it seems that that's one of our how shall we say, deteriorating things in our society is we don't want to make those decisions and we have somebody else make it for us. I, I'd be opposed to that because mm -hmm. I think the most of their meals are going to be eaten at home or the parent is going to have to make a decision over whether they serve, uh, let's say, a sugary drink or not. So I, I guess I, I didn't agree with you on that, that portion of your testimony mm -hmm. there. I'm going to back Carl up on that. I don't think a parent should ever think, I'm not going to have this fight with my kid because I want to have a relaxing dinner. I think that's always our job. Mm -hmm. And if it you know, takes away from the relaxation of dinner, then we're supposed to be parents. Well, I think my point is if you know, you're at a restaurant with your child and there's water, milk, and juice, and then there's soda, most kids are going to want the soda. You don't have to say yes. No. One of us has to say yes. No, you, no, you don't have to. We set up our own boundaries for our kids, and there's, that's, if it creates a battle at a restaurant, so be it. So I have a question, and I don't know, actually, if you would know the answer to this. I don't know. Schools have had, over the years, um, soda machines or dispensing, mm -hmm. including water and juice and soda and things. I don't know if that still is true today because I haven't checked. Would you know? Would anyone know? Because as soon as, this is years ago, this was a practice that started and when I initially questioned why this was happening, apparently the schools get a certain amount of revenue from whatever is sold from dispensing. And if these sodas are being sold still in schools, we need to do something about that because I don't think that's really appropriate myself, especially given the health issues. And with eating out at restaurants, children's eating habits start at home. It is what we give our kids from the time they are born. So a lot of children develop the habit of wanting the soda because they get it at home. What so. I will say we also are seeing is dining out used to be a treat and for some parents it's becoming a more yes. regular practice. Mm -hmm. And so while I mean, personally, my, my daughter's only two uh, and a half. That's why I'm saying that the, the testament, the battle of wills is starting now. Mm -hmm. um, but I think as parents are dining out more frequently, the, the treat is becoming the norm. So that's a parental um, decision. Mm -hmm. not, not all treats have to be of a certain nature. So. Yeah, parents give up a whole lot of control. So, anyway, sorry. It's okay. We, um, and your comment around, um, or your question around <coughs> schools, schools and soda is, you know, there's always next year. And consider, you know, True. those kinds of things. I saw a hand over here. Uh, I have a quick question about another part of your testimony, if I may, mm -hmm. in the Just the Facts mm -hmm. chart. This, this graph right here? Yes. I, I, I like graphs. I was looking at that. What explains the evidence here that boys up until they reach 18 consume more sugar, it seems, than their female peers. But when they become adults, the women seem to overtake the men as far as consumption of sugar. Why would that be? Um, I think it's an interesting trend. I don't have the answer as to why that manifests the way it does. 
It's, it's uncanny in each mm -hmm. spot like that. They discover beer. <laughs> <laughs> that was my theory, actually. <laughs> and wine it contains oh. sugar. <laughs> that could be the default. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, Carl, you had your Peels. Hand up for well, a just a, uh, for a question. as a sort of a, a reference to what Mariano was saying, school boards usually make that decision about the soda machine. So I mean, that's at least when I was on the school board. Yeah. So yeah, we, we, uh, my best of my knowledge, I hope they still did it, but I think they, they took, you know, those types of sodas or whatever. Sure. <laughs> so Jennifer, to recap your testimony, it, you had multiple reasons why. The Cancer Society supports this. Can you perhaps list those other ones besides avoiding arguments? Yes. Um, there is undoubtedly a link between obesity and cancer. We know that the best, one of the best ways besides not smoking or using tobacco products to reduce your risk of getting cancer is from weight control, dietary choices, and physical exercise. Um, that would be our, our, our biggest. And we know that one of the biggest contributing factors in America to weight gain is sugar-sweetened beverages, the consumption of them. And that chart that you pointed to, the, the interesting one with the, um, the, uh, the curve there, is that half of the U.S. population consumes sugar drinks on every day. 10% of kids have three or more. Just an interesting fact there. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Thanks. Clearly, you're very busy, Andrew. No, I'm just kind of, yeah, yeah, kind of running around. I know. So. I appreciate it. Oh. Andrew McLean. I'm with the Beverage Association of Vermont. Um, what is the Beverage Association of Vermont? It is the a trade association of the state non-alcoholic beverage distributors like Coca-Cola Northern New England, which is in Colchester. There's, there's a Pepsi plant in South Burlington. <coughs> John Leader's got a plant down in Brattleboro. Um, there, there's a couple other smaller ones, but that's, ba that's primarily it. And then represent Polar, which is primarily out of outside of Vermont. Um, a couple of, I guess basically, I, I, I guess the bottom line is we are neutral on the bill that passed from the Senate. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I mean, don't don't support it, don't oppose it. Um, I guess the only thing I would like to say, just based on a couple of the comments and things I've heard briefly, is that um, based on our sales, my client sales, the mix of product being sold in Vermont is changing and has changed a lot over the last five years. Co you know, uh, regular Coke used to be the prime seller of their, it's not anymore. They sell a lot of, you know, they're branching out, doing teas, sugar-free drinks, water, seltzer. A lot of that is their you know, the number one seller. So the, the mix is changing a lot. Um, well, they we heard about this, the, the uh, beverages in schools. The companies worked together with schools, and it was decided that it just wasn't, you know, wasn't, wasn't the right idea, wasn't the right mix, et cetera. And I think there was a mutual decision amongst the school and the, and the companies to, to uh, take bever you know, sugared beverages outside of schools, and that still, still is the case. Um, you know, the, they're, you know, try, try, do their best, try not to advertise to kids. The idea is not to have a three-year-old, you know, with a sippy cup of a Coca-Cola. That's not the idea. So, I mean, I think I think things are changing. There's a there's a national campaign uh, between the Clinton Foundation, American Heart Association, and and companies that uh, trying to reduce calories from uh, drinks by twenty by twenty percent by 2025. I think they're gonna, I think they're going to uh, exceed that. And that was as of the last couple of years. So, I mean, I disagree with some of the statistics about the the root cause being. Uh, our beverages, but you know, bottom line for this bill, I mean, our position is we're neutral. Thank you. Yes, Carl. Yeah, I just like to know. I mean, you you said that there is this trend to mm -hmm. have less uh, 
sugary things in mm -hmm. the machines, mm -hmm. or even on your mm -hmm. crops, your distribution routes. What do you attribute those reductions? To? Well, I, I think a couple of things. I, th I think some of it is the work of uh, the legislature and discussions on obesity. I think that's an issue. I think that palates are changing. I mean, I think you know it's interesting the discussion. Uh, many times you say that advertising and companies drive um, drive consumption. I think that these companies are very attuned to the wants of their customers and I think the changing palates of people I don't think I don't think people drink as much soda now as they used to I think the younger people don't as much as they used to so I think I think a lot of different things but I think some of it is this discussion I think I think calorie counts on menus have I mean it has an impact on me when I look at it and I look at something I said geez I thought that was fairly you know and it's like 1200 calories well you know so I think some of the I think a lot of that's had an impact so just to follow up, uh, would you attribute some of it to the educational programs as well, like oh, sure. Cancer Society? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Society. Oh, no, no. Uh, I, when people I, yeah, yeah. smarter uh, for the most part. Absolutely. Drink smarter. Absolutely, yep. So education, you think, was it? Well, I think education, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm hmm <coughs> okay. other, other questions for Andrew? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for stopping me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. Jane? No, it's than this, but um, it actually allows me to respond to some of um, my colleagues, uh, peers that were testifying before. So I'm Jane Kolodinsky. I chair the Department of Community Development and Applied Economics at UVM and direct the Center for Rural Studies. And I'm on the Adv Advocacy Committee of the Vermont Heart Association. And many of my comments are rooted in um, an op-ed piece that was published in several papers across Vermont, which I believe many of you have read or, or have. So and, the, and perhaps someone could make sure that we have it. Um, I'd like to make just a, a few points. The original legislation required restaurants to meet nutrition standards for the entire meal and not only um, beverages. And the committee and the, the Senate side received a good deal of testimony supporting that broader intent. But in the interest of working together and to agree on a positive, a positive step towards addressing obesity, health organizations, businesses, and restaurants interested in the issue were able to reach this compromise bill, which only includes um, the, the beverage component. Um, I want to say that school policies indeed have gotten rid of so many of them have gotten rid of soda in the, in the vending machines, and so there are limits to the amount of sugar that are available. Um, I also would like to comment on um, the comments that say parents really should control um, what their children eat. And yes, this is true. However, our own government, the Center for Disease Control, has swung way over the, uh, the spectrum from education only towards make the healthy choice the easy choice, which is really nudge or behavioral economics to help people make the healthy choice the easy choice. And so my goal. Um, in my lifetime as a professor is to probably see that pendulum swing back to the middle where it's yes we should have policies that help consumers to make the healthy choice the easy choice but they don't know how to do that unless there's education along with it so it's a combination of public policy and education um, and I, I strongly believe that as an educator there's another comment that I'd like to, to make, and that's that the fastest growing category of foods and beverages in the United States, if you were to look at the trade associations, is the healthy food category and the clean label category. And what a clean label means are products with fewer than five ingredients, such as water, 100% juice, and milk, which are what are being um, proposed to be on the menus. Um, fastest growing. Um, component. And my own work has found that when restaurants do make these changes, there's a possibility for a whole segment of consumers that you're actually missing now that choose not to eat out because they can't find the types of foods and beverages that they would like their children to eat. And so when you say we can go to the other side of, of the menu and we can ask for can I have the milk instead of the soda, which is the default, 
um, it's really no different than having the milk as the default and I as a parent, if I want my children to have soda, then I would have to ask for it. It's just flipping the page a little bit. It's not really changing <coughs> the, the situation at all. Um, Vermont is, is known many times as a leader in a lot of public policy issues and I believe they can be a leader in this issue as well. There was a comment that said that 20 restaurants uh, were, were um, we're already doing this voluntarily. Well, the American Heart Association, and I was at one of those restaurants, worked with seven restaurants, not 20. So it's, it's not a pervasive yet. It was just a pilot test to see whether or not these types of beverages and foods would be acceptable on the menu. So it was never meant to be the policy. It was meant to be a pilot to show that these kinds of policies actually do work and will be accepted by consumers. And while some restaurants have chosen to offer healthy drinks to, to kids, 75% do not. And between, I think it's the year 2010 and 2013, um, the number of restaurants that voluntarily chose to meet nutrition standards grew from 1% to 3%. So this is a small upward climb that public policy can help move in the right direction. And we're not talking that um, soda is not available on the menus. It's just that the default is the healthy option. And if parents want their children to have the soda, then indeed they can just ask for it, just like I used to ask for milk, which was barely ever even available on a menu when my kids um, were growing up. So I'm an economist. And there are some economic reasons to do this. Um, I was happy to hear that um, the beverage industry is neutral on this bill because industry is really smart. They know that if consumption of sugary beverages is going down, then they will change their product mix and um, develop products that consumers demand. And indeed, the upswing is that consumers are demanding more of these healthier options on their menus. There was also a comment about um, most food is eaten at home. Indeed, we have just surpassed that 50% of our food dollar is spent on food away from home. So the majority, it's not most, the majority is, is spent on food away from home instead of at, at home venues. And um, as others have testified, um, food away from home is higher in fat, calories, um, sodium, and so on, all things that lead to negative health outcomes. There are a few examples. Um, the Silver Diner restaurant chain actually decided to eliminate sugary drinks and fries with its kids' meals. They saw um, profits increase, and the increase in profits were greater than the surrounding restaurants. So there is some indication that this, is a, this can have a positive effect on business and not be a burden. Um, UVMMC, the University of Vermont Medical Center, has um, for years been trending in healthier meals for um, the hospital patrons. And I, I like to ask the statistic, how many people do you think choose to eat at the hospital because they have no other reason to be there than to eat? Well, My daughter used to like to do that. <laughs> <laughs> my, my sister and brother-in-law, they found that that was one of the cheapest places to eat, where they had, where they had a, like an open cafeteria in the hospital. So, right. but, so they used to go there. But, but, but that's used to. But since the menu has swung into this very healthy choices, it was 13% of people report they have no other reason to be at the hospital than to eat in their restaurants, which, which is kind of an indication that this trend is really swinging swinging towards the healthier options. People are going to the hospital. <laughs> yes. They are going to the hospital um, to cover, eat. Cover, cover. This is not UVMFC. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I have colleagues that do take their dates to the hospital. <laughs> um, and I'd also like to note that I, I've taught marketing for many, many years. And it is, I, I wish I could just pull up my magic um, my magic computer and find the statistics, but labels change every six months in general. Um, products change their labels every six months. So it's not that maybe, maybe if this bill is passed, um, there might be some time to, to ease it in, but it's not like it's going to be a big burden because um, labels change. And it's not like you see the same menu for three years before someone reprints a menu. So that burden is not going to be the burden um, that I believe that is the, the point is being make, made. And then finally, I'd like to leave you with, um, it's an anecdote, but we used to say cigarettes, when used as directed, were the only legal product that killed you. And I'd like to, to say, make an analogy that say sugary beverages that only are sugar and water, such as a carbonated beverage, when used as directed, 
are a legal product that has no other purpose than to eventually kill you because it adds to obesity, cancer, and um, negative health outcomes. And so why not make the healthy choice the easy choice for our children uh, moving forward and support the compromise bill that says on menus we would make the, the um, healthy drink options the default. I, I know you, I see you coming from both angles on this, that you're happy with so, so much progress that has been made in terms of people voluntarily changing and habits changing and restaurants uh, obviously uh, changing their menu based on people's uh, educated decisions to eat differently or drink differently. So that's why I'm surprised we at this point where we see this progress being made decide we're going to legislate something that makes it a law instead of the, uh, the choice of the restaurateur or the, uh, these various companies. So uh, I applaud the, uh, the efforts to educate people to reduce their calorie intake, especially of beverages. I think that's great because, I mean, it's, it's too bad with so many people that are overweight and, and all. So, um, but I just don't see why we need to make it a law when we see the trends going the, the way we want them to go anyway. Well, I think when we go back to the, the that wasn't a question. Would you like a response? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> when we were working on the question. Oh. <laughs> well, I thought it, it was another. Why would we want to take a hospital? So I'll, I'll go back to um, to the concept of uh, what the CDC says, and mm -hmm. CDC Centers for Disease Control and Public Health Policy really supports making the healthy choice the easy choice, and one of the easy way, easiest ways to get businesses to comply, because I did say the statistic was only 3%. It's increased by two percentage points of restaurants that would like to, to help um, with the healthy menu choices. Make the healthy choice the easy choice. The easiest way is to legislate it. No, I, I just recall, in fact, may, maybe it's changed, but I thought the, the uh, normal thing at a restaurant was you always get a glass of water, you know, uh, almost all the time. And then, then because of environmental issues, people thought a lot of water was being wasted. So I think restaurants started cutting back on it. But I think most restaurants I go to, water is the default beverage if you don't order something else. You know? uh, but on a children's menu, the menu typically comes with, and I, I'm gonna, I don't mean to be stereotypical, I'm gonna be stereotypical, chicken fingers, fries, and a soda. So it's a package deal. And so within that package deal, if it's still going to be chicken fingers and fries, you can still get water on the side. Um, I believe that this bill would say you get a bottled water or a seltzer or, some, or sure. a juice Except for or these, milk. These particular people uh, that represent a lot of restaurants, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Dairy Queen, IHOP, Applebee's, and Jack in the Box, Subway, and Panera, they right now already do a default beverage, which is not soda. That's what I understand. So I mean, that's that's a heck of a heck of a lot of progress. The way I would see it, and I and think from education, what's that? They have all the hospitals. No, they don't. Oh. They have one hospital that's on the cutting edge, and that okay. happens to be in our strong little state of Vermont. Anyway, just a, a comment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, that last comment. Why one one hospital in their state of Vermont that's on the cutting edge? What? Why do you make that? Oh. Say something nice about it. Well, okay, okay. So Vermont, the UVMMC for the last 10 years has been really pushing the envelope on healthy meals offered in their cafeterias. Mm -hmm. And um, hospitals throughout the state are jumping on the bandwagon because you always have to have proof of concept. And what they've done is they've got this proof of concept that it works and therefore the, you know, the wheels start rolling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Um, we have get some of the ones oh. I, can I get, I, I, I just entered, since I was busy running around, I was, I had one, one statistic I thought might be interesting for you. Um, since we're in talking stats, Andrew McLean again. This year, the Champlain Valley Fair, that bastion of healthy living, <laughs> all right, for the first time, right, because Coca-Cola, CCN and E's the, the, the purveyor uh, has the soda, uh, the contract for there. For the first time, not 
non-sugared beverages were the predominant seller at the Champlain Valley Fair. So that's saying something how yeah, right. it's it's just, ideas have changed. It says a lot about people in Chittenden County, I think. Right, Bill and the water. <laughs> no, they're, they're not sugar. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right, Bill and the water. No, but I just, I just thought, I just thought that was a, that's an, inter, that's an interesting stat. Yeah. Thank you. Thank no. you, Andrew. Okay. Okay. Um, are we asking Andrew a question? Yeah, so just, just, just do we know why, why they made that decision? No. Yeah. Just, and, and just, did they as the individual? Quick question. Do you have any stats on uh, sodas and such? in movie theaters in Vermont? No. I do not. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Um, so the next two witnesses are on the phone. We have um, Dr. Francisco Corvalden. I'm looking to the answer or how are you, are you pronounce that person's name. I will say it wrong, so we'll introduce myself. Okay, thank you. I, I would say Corbellin, but it's not correct. I'll just say doctor. Not the Francisco. 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 Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Francisco, he's Francisco. right. He's right. Is it a CIRC? It's an on. That's his first name. <clears throat> Chip Stucco. Yeah. Francisco. I didn't hear apologize. I didn't, I didn't. Oh, sorry, Tom. That's okay. <laughs> I think nothing about that, Francisco. Got to eat these two. So this is Porter Hospital. This is Porter Hospital. That's around Middlebury, isn't it? Uh-huh. Is that not a chicken dinner? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. We're, we're going outside. Oh, a little now. bit outside. We're moving down. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, Addison. That's Addison. I, I'm sorry that we did not get someone from Central Vermont and Barry. Are you taking my pulse, man? <laughs> we can check the hospital menu for you, though. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, this is a good one, yeah. Hi, about the bill in general while we're waiting? Pardon me? Can I ask a question about the bill in general? Absolutely, because, okay. I mean, so we, we have two people who are on the phone, yeah. um, the last two people, and perhaps they thought they were later in the day. Mm -hmm. um, so that may be part of the... <laughs> so go ahead. Yeah, my question is, I don't recall a portion in here of what the penalty was for restaurants not adhering to this. Is well, let's any? pull the bill up. I don't, see I don't believe it's, there is one, but it's let's, nothing let's, let's pull the book up and take a look at it. I don't want that, but I guess I, I didn't see anything in there, so I'm certain that I'm, um, you know, it's, a, it's a nice to do thing to tell people. I think, I think uh, not, uh, if I they don't do it, probably the the people won't go there. I think that will be the, there. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, so like the market, the market right, was there is not the law. Yes, so I can sort of answer that question. Okay, Katie okay. can answer it much better than I, but the, the penalty isn't listed in the bill. But any restaurants that's licensed, it would be the same penalty that any other restaurant would have to face if they did any kind of health violations. Um, there is a chapter, I just don't have it with me. I can, actually, I can get it to you in like a minute. Well, perhaps 
So lawyers, it's a few hundred dollars or less. Huh? It's a few hundred dollars or less, and it usually takes multiple kind of violations before they're fine. But fine. Perhaps a lawyer in the room who supports this bill can find the legislative penalty. <laughs> a person who violates a provision of this chapter um, shall be fined. Could, could you? Oh. Sorry. Uh, Rebecca Ramos with the Heart Association um, shall not be fined not more than three hundred dollars for the first offense and for each subsequent offense not more than five hundred. So it goes with the um, <clears throat> everything else. In the so it's pretty still fine. Well, oh, especially if you got four families in there at once. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a one time. It's, it's not. No, it's just for a violation. violation. Yeah. Right. It's a health and safety. Are you coming back? Or? Yes, of course. Of course. Um, <coughs> as we are waiting, um, is there anyone who is sitting on the sides? who has not testified, who would like to testify. Could I answer? So I've testified, but I'd like right to answer it, go right ahead. And then we may take a break, because we're waiting for people. So um, I'll probably forget some of them, but Representative Gamash, just to answer your question about the schools and yes. what's offered. So there's federal regulations now within the Competitive Food Act that prohibits the sale of sugary drinks during the school day until half hour after the school day. So that's why you don't see the vending machines anymore. They're there, but more for like after school and sports and stuff are going on. Yeah. So that, um, yeah, I had been, I knew that the, that was a very active program at one time, and I didn't. I haven't made an inquiry, so I yeah. really didn't know where that yeah. stood, but I'm glad to hear that. Yes, and, and so I think that kind of speaks <coughs> to why we're here, too, that um, as we've seen with the Vermont's Tobacco Control Program, it's not going to be just one thing that's going to change behavior. And the reason we have a problem with obesity is it's there's a variety of reasons that's happening, right? And so with the Tobacco Control Program, they're trying to do stuff in schools, in communities, through education, through marketing, and that's that's what we see is effective. And so we believe that, you know, we have the nutrition standards for state government, that in restaurants, in early childcare, in schools, that's what's going to make the difference. It won't be this on its own. It will be this as part of all these other efforts that are going on. And I, so I also wanted to correct on, Professor Kalidinsky spoke a little bit about this, um, one of the things that Rhonda Burns said about the Heart Association's work on this issue. It is not an easy lift to have voluntary change. Um, when she mentioned we worked with 20 restaurants, we didn't, we worked with seven and we paid them stipends to do that. They you know, didn't chomp at the bit to do that. We paid them for the food and we paid them for their time so they could create it. And then we offered it to the communities to see what communities thought about it and whether they like the, the food, et cetera. And so with those restaurants, while well, we appreciate them and we had a great working relationship, the change did not continue. It was two years ago. So it was a one-time event. So it is not, it's not as easy as it, she made it sound. It's, it's not continuing. We did it once. Working with every restaurant in the state of Vermont, it will not change it overnight. And as also as um, Professor Kalidinsky said, what we've seen nationally over the past few years, we've only had a change of 1% of restaurants to 3% who meet nutrition standards. It is not, even with consumer demand, the change is very, very small. And we're spending $300 million on treating obesity in the state of Vermont. And that's just adults. That's not the cost to our kids that are growing up. And that's why we feel it's so imperative. It's, it's not as easy as trying to work with organizations to improve nutrition, and certainly we will do that and have tried to do that on our own. That's not going to bring about the kind of change that's going to save us healthcare dollars or prevent obesity. And um, one last thing, I'm sorry. So, and again, it's wonderful that some national change have made some progress in terms of like McDonald's and Panera and Applebee's, who have the default beverage for kids being healthy. Again, that's wonderful. But again, 74% are not. So there are some, but especially all the mom and pop stores where you know the majority, I think, of, of, of Vermonters go to eat, we're not seeing it. Yes, it's great that there's change, but it's not the kind of change that's going to change behavior. The Sweetwater's <coughs> kids meal, age 10 and under, includes one side and soda or chocolate or whole milk. 
And so it was the first. Yeah. I just sort of thought I mean, What was that on? Uh, sweet waters. I mean, I just thought, you know, I just, Okay, okay, so we're going to go, go Barry. Okay. So I, I was curious, so I, 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 I was trying to think of a restaurant where the kids might join us um, and, and what this means. Because what I'm hearing is that there's been progress from 1 to 3 percent. And so. It, and there's oh, an argument between on the regular part of the menu. Um, where it's the non regulation. Because I remember a time when like, probably an argument if you wanted milk for your child, um, lots of having places they didn't carry it. Move that yeah, I don't and know because we didn't ask media. that question. Yeah, I think so. Um, more just so speaking in it only. I don't know, just as a parent who goes out. Um, you, know, you can find the beverage section, policy. and it's usually like that like the sodas or juices because juices can be made in alcoholic beverages as well. That's hard for me to believe. So much you know, milk. So yeah. Yeah. You understand where I'm coming from? I look at those, they say they represent the majority of fast food restaurants. It's been many years. And Applebee's is sort of an in between, so, it's more, it's of a, many years more of a family restaurant that than a come up in a restaurant. But, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be but I was just nice wondering that the other thing I would say is that I think they have all soda products. Yeah, for the sugar, restaurant, close to the restaurant, so you have the kids say, well, in the house. Oh, okay. I have a question. So. Um, encouraged by the search here, I looked to Mr. Z's in Barry, and for children 12 years and younger, it includes beverage. This bill would prohibit that language, correct? You Say could that not again. use a. You could not use the word beverage to describe beverage. I, w I would think not. I think you would have to list the ones that we talked about. Okay, right. I guess that's a Katie question, but it seems like if we're saying it has to include a beverage. Well, it doesn't say sugary beverage, though. I, I don't. I don't know. That's a that's a Katie question. Generic. Yeah. Right. So the so the language of this bill, I mean, it is a Katie question. Yeah. Would, would have Mr. Z's change its right. menu? Right. Right. And they have to. I, Even though it's a neutral term, they're not saying soda. They're not saying Pepsi. They're not saying. But this bill would have them change their menu. I, probably. Yeah. But the word um, shell. Mm -hmm. So topper um, shell shell the word shell uh -huh. that's, that's, that's pretty strong as far as I'm concerned. Did you find a restaurant I that did. serves French fries and uh -huh. kids yeah. menu kids uh, menu ladder one restaurant? grill ladder one oh grill. Well, a lot of kids don't go there one. oh it's a good drinking place go it's what a good eating say? place nice. well you, you, you get a you get a free kids chocolate or caramel sundae with every kids meal oh, I'm going no. there you get that free uh, sorry you? but um <laughs> you get all kids menu items come with the choice of fountain soda milk or chocolate milk how's that well you start with so fountain can, soda yeah. that's oh, the first you that's have the first you want. thing that's i would just sort of know. anything else on there um well, and Chicken I, fingers, cheeseburger. Try uh, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. The, the wayside. Uh, what's that place? The wayside. That's, what's that yeah. place? Uh, Berlin, Berlin. 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 We used to bring all the hockey kids and everything to eat. Uh, wayside? Wayside? No, no. It's yeah, I know. Now that was what the bigger, no, the bigger bill was about. French fries. Oh God! Oh God! French fries. We still have to list anything. I don't even know. French fries. I wanted to make a comment, please. Yes, please. From my, <laughs> from my <laughs> as, as, if I may, as you're researching some of these, I, I, you know, I think this speaks to one of the issues that we tried to get across here. It's the bundling of this meal that's part of the problem, right? That you're getting the hot dog and your fries, and you're getting this beverage as part of it. And as uh, Karen Lafayette said the other day, you, you're trying to get a big bang for your buck, but you're getting the sugary drink that's lumped in with it, and and so that's part of the problem, whether or not you intended to go get it there you are, it's part of the deal. And so wouldn't it be better to just have that healthy option be part of what you get instead of kind of like, you know, whether or not you wanted that Sunday too, that's part of that. You, you're getting a whole bunch of not good for you stuff for your, for your children, which you can say no to, but the, the, the bundling is kind of what creates the norm, right? That's what kids think of and that's what parents think of as a kid's meal is all those things together. And this is not required because I just went on Al's French fries. Oh, good. And Al's French fries does not have a kid's menu. They just have fries. Right, so it would not require anyone so, to so have a cookie. Right. So, so right. right. If you had a kid's correct. meal that had the beverage, then you would have to follow so all those kids it. They should fix County the adult meals as well. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know.
Because you don't have a choice. You absolutely don't have a strong reveal. Take, um, I think a break because I think that the two people on the phone were thinking that we were going to be a bit later in the afternoon. Well, I did get a message from Dr. Corbalin, or uh -huh. however you say his name. Um, <laughs> and he was, wa it said he was waiting for a half hour and he wasn't sure if he was going to be contacted. So I emailed him that they're trying to reach you, but I have not heard a response. So oh, okay. okay. I'm okay, trying. I'm gonna... try again. Yeah, yeah I, I just, I well, didn't hear back yet, so I don't know if you... Question. Sure, go right If ahead. we have, are there any other current laws on the books that tell a restaurant or an eating establishment as to what meals they, they should or should not provide or what beverages they should or should not provide other than alcohol to people yeah. less than... I don't know about Vermont, but, but like there are 10 ordinances in California, Colorado, and Maryland that do just this, that so say you have to... Yeah, yeah, so I don't know about Vermont. There are certainly other laws that restaurants have to comply with on, for health issues. Mm -hmm. I don't know in terms of serving things. One that was mentioned to us from a restaurant that was on our list of supporting restaurants was the composting law where she mentioned, you know, restaurants didn't like it and they grumbled on oh, it's one more thing but, but then they easily did it and it's water under the bridge and that's kind of what Somebody she was making the case that happens often mm -hmm. so if I could make my comment quickly. yes please do okay so my <laughs> um, my limited experience as a parent with one child um, and being an old hippie uh, we raised her making her uh, all of her own baby food we ground everything up in a, a food mm. mill mm -hmm. and avoided the children <laughs> yeah. to the end of the story Avoided uh, all baby food, uh, gave her no sugar for probably six or eight years, and she's 41 years old. She's never had a cavity or a filling or a pulled tooth. She uh, run, runs five miles a day. She's spelt and in excellent health. So I guess my conclusion is that we did something right. Right. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a great but story. you did something right. Terrific. You did something yeah. right. Yeah. We did the same thing. We had that mix of things. Yeah, yeah, the what food mill. Food mill. No, it wasn't a food mill. Yeah. It was yeah. a dry may, may I ask Everything we ate on the day machine. Okay, okay, One quick question on the, language. <laughs> on the language of the bill here, it, and I just noticed this, in, in the fruit juice section, uh -huh. it's limited to not more than eight ounces. Can you just, what, is there a reasoning behind that? It's probably because it has natural occurring sugar and the calorie count is probably higher for that. Um, that's probably this. Beyond eight ounces of fruit juice, it's, it's a higher sugar calorie. A higher, calories cal than cal higher calorie amount then. We had originally had limitations for the, for the milk as well. We were just, as part of the entire meal, was trying to keep calorie counts down. Um, I would have to do some research I can't do on the spot now, but it may have to do with recommended serving sizes for juices from both the Pediatric Association and the Heart Association too. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sure. That could be like a difference between having a half a cup of fresh grapes as opposed to a whole. Okay. Um, thank you for allowing me to. Yep. Yeah, um, I think this is a good place for us to take a 10 minute break. And hopefully by then, um, our phone people will be back. And so we can talk to our phone people. Um, the two phone people are um, two. Physicians, um, see so. um, and my question to folks is: Are there other constituent groups that you um, or perspectives <coughs> that you have not heard from that you um, want to hear from? We've heard from the restaurants. Mm -hmm. The restaurants are. Um, there is no longer a separate restaurant association, so that is why we heard from the two chambers. And we have one chamber, the state chamber, that says don't mandate, and the, um, the other says, and the other the says um, we support it. Right. How about, again, I would have no idea how this group would respond <coughs> to testimony, but uh, <coughs> the association of homeschoolers, people that homeschool their children, um, Having nothing to do specifically with, with this, this bill. But I, yeah. So, so I, I can't. Can we like? I mean, unless you're thinking of um, right, amending I'm, the bill, this has to do obviously with obviously where out. some of us around the state are coming from is that we think it's really the parents' responsibility to direct what their child eats, and not the state of Vermont. Okay. Oh, okay. So, uh, I'd be curious if a group of people that have also taken it into their own hands to educate their kids. Okay would 
would have a stronger feeling about this bill than people at large. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you know, it would also be interesting thing for the well. Sure. Anyway, I I guess that's really it. I don't okay. want to get okay. too much yeah. into it, but I just would. And it, again, it may be too off the track for anybody else to be interested. And you just asked me would that. Yeah, no, no. I mean, that's. Okay. Um, I mean, and I initially was like, where are you going with this? Um, but I mean. We, <laughs> He's going to well, see, so he actually prompted me to say it. He said, oh, oh, yeah. I, I did something right. <laughs> he and his wife, did, you know. No, the end result is what I'm talking about. I know. Is that okay. the lack of sugar promoted right. exactly. a healthy I understand. child? Was a, but, promote but a healthy you were the one that controlled that, that sugar. No, that, that wasn't my point. Yeah, but that was the But result. that is. Huh. Yeah. yeah, but you got your child used to eating a certain way. Mm -hmm from the time she was born. And that has carried her through her life. Yeah. And that is well, my she's point not too. So, I mean, no, 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 no. But she's the thing old, is, old, old. Old. I did not. I think, you know, this is a conversation we need to have they don't offer um, as a committee, which is fine. And what's the role of public policy? What is the role of parents? We're talking about homeschoolers. I might talk about vaccines. Is it, I mean, you know, is it the. Do we require vaccines or do we let parents decide? Um, so there's all sorts of things that we can sort of tease out um, in terms of what is the role of um, government in as the in, in 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 moving us in a direction. If this is a direction we want, which is healthy kids um, and less obesity, and it's okay, we'll figure out what what we do. But let's take a break because yes. um, I'm, I'm a little hesitant about having too much of a discussion when we have not heard from um, two more of the witnesses. Um, a critical mass because two people are just in the um, Mariana, could you close the door? And um, why don't you try? Um, have we heard from the doctor whose name I can't pronounce? No. No, I haven't heard back from him, and I contacted his office, and he's not in the office, so I'm not sure if I've texted him as well. So, yeah. I'm <laughs> witness. Okay. so I'll call the other person. Uh -huh. All right. <laughs> quite a bit about healthy eating over the past 13 years that end up feeling undermined by cultural messaging about food, especially in restaurants. So eating out can be a break from the usual routine, a chance to try new foods or a way to celebrate, but it can also be stressful for parents trying to encourage their kids to adopt a, a healthy diet. Items on the children's menu are typically high in calories and lacking in nutrition. Most foods have some redeeming quality. There's protein in chicken nuggets and calcium in macaroni and cheese. The notable exception here is sugar-sweetened beverages, which typically offer only calories. Fountain drinks, in particular, offer empty calories before eating has even started. 
water, milk, and to a lesser extent, 100% fruit juice, the beverages included in as fancy, are much better choices for children's health. Kids Meal sends a strong cultural message to children as they are establishing their dietary habits. While the meals may appeal to children, they create challenges for parents trying to instill good eating habits. When it comes to eating out, parents can end up feeling that their own dietary intentions for their kids have been hijacked. Offering healthy defaults guides children towards making healthier decisions without removing ultimate choice. Our children are the first generation that may, on average, live shorter lives than their parents due to obesity and associated chronic diseases like diabetes. Disproving these predictions requires support from everyone. Through proposed legislation at 70, Vermont restaurants can lead the way by replacing unhealthy default beverages with healthier choices. <coughs> this would support the intentions of most parents I know and help prime children for making a life's worth of healthy choices as adults. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yep, no, I see that. Thank you very much, Doctor. Um, I want to ask the committee if they have um, any com questions for you as a parent, as well as a public, as you said, a public health um, doctor. Sure. Committee? I have a... Speak up. Okay, I have a question that ha doesn't have to do with to your um, a question to an MD. Is that something you're ready to take? Uh, I'm happy to take it. There's um, various specialties within uh, the realm of an MD, so I may or may not be qualified to answer that. Sure, I'm just trying to make some sense of what I'm hearing. When we talk about sugar in sodas, we're really talking about high fructose corn syrup, right? Uh, for the most part, there are some sodas that actually even advertise that it's cane sugar. <laughs> um, we think that it's sugar from from sugar cane, like much like what you might find in your own uh, kitchen. Um, and some people think that that's better than high fructose corn syrup, but um, it's still empty calories. Um, and, and still contributes to obesity. Yeah. I'm just mentioning that because there seems to be some correlation between the increases in obesity and when these soda companies switched from sugar to high fructose corn syrup. Yeah, and I think that people have looked at that um, and it, the science isn't completely clear on whether, it's, whether high fructose corn syrup is um, to blame, but I think more more importantly, the science is more clear that it's the um, the sweetened beverages, however they're sweetened, which has the link to obesity. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, we have another question. Can you define <coughs> empty calories for me? Because I know when my wife sees me have an alcoholic beverage, she says, oh, there's some more empty calories. Okay, so, but, uh, so I, I'm just curious, because obviously there are calories to be burned up by the body uh, that would be used in exercise or, or whatever. But I would enjoy hearing your definition of empty calories. Sure, so I would define empty calories as calories that um, do not provide nutritional content. So. Um, I, I made the comparison with, for example, chicken nuggets, which I'm, I'm not promoting chicken nuggets, but they, at least they have some protein. Um, they, they are high in calories. They're high in fat. I would not define them as a nutritional food, but I also wouldn't say that they're empty calories. So, um, so sugar-sweetened beverages are empty calories because they're providing calories without any nutritional benefit. So if you take a soda, for example, that's just sugar and water and flavorings and maybe some coloring. There's, there's nothing that contributes to a person's nutrition. And so alcohol can, can be um, viewed in, in the same way for the most part. Um, I think maybe you can split hairs over wine or, or beer, but 
I agree with your wife. I'd rather eat my calories than drink them. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, can we focus on the bill? Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Uh, I think I am. Yeah. Um, I, I look at these, uh, when we talk about sodas, it, it, it's uh, like if it's Diet Coke or Diet whatever, um, there's no calories in it. That's what it says. My, the sugar is the, the, the sweetener is the, the bad part, right? Um, it, the sugar is linked with obesity um, because of the, of the calories. The, the person is drinking those calories. Um, so is your, is your question, are, are diet sodas okay? Are they no, considered no. a healthy beverage? No, when you, you, I keep hearing the word calories mm -hmm. and empty calories, and I'm thinking, <coughs> last time I looked at one of those cans, it said there were no calories in it. So yeah. There's no and, calories um, in it. There must be the sweetener that's the the culprit. Right. So, um, in, in most of the time, and this is probably speaking more from experience than um, than statistics, so the the drinks that are being offered to children are not diet sodas. They have calories. They they're the the full on caloric. Um, version of a soda or a sugar sweetened beverage. Um, I personally didn't feel like I wanted to give my children diet soda because it's not clear to me that that artificial artificial sweeteners are fine for them either. So um, we may be trading one evil for another. I have a comment that's somewhat associated. This is the second time today I heard the phrase that uh, this generation, the life expectancy of the upcoming generation is maybe lower than future, partly based or mainly based on obesity and linked to sugar. And so I've been looking at the report that reported that. It's a 12-year-old report that among the other issues that jeopardize life expectancy the opioid problem is not even mentioned. This is 12 years ago. And I think that since then, the evidence is that the life expectancy is going through a measurable downward change based on overdoses and misuse of drugs. And so I just, because it came up the second time, I just thought that as this Human Services Committee, when we consider things that contribute to a decreasing or less than uh, a lowering of the rise of life expectancy. There's a lot of contributing Better factors. Figure that, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. I um, and you know, I think both are. This is a situation where both are are at play as well as as other factors. Um, you know, in in 1918, a lot of young people died from influenza, and so uh, these are models and predictions which hold some value, um, but are not necessarily true. Um, and, and there's many, um, many risks out there for, for all of us. And so the role of a public health physician is to identify what those risks are and reduce them, whatever they are, whether that's sugar or um, opioids <coughs> or infectious diseases. Thank you. Um, do we have other questions? And do you have any final comment that you want to leave us with, Doctor? I think that um, I think that I would say that sometimes I I hear that um, it's up to the parents to educate their children on what to eat, and that we shouldn't interfere in the restaurant or in the marketplace. And but. My experience has been that I did take that job seriously. I, I continue to educate my kids about what is a healthy diet. And I feel like it is really an uphill battle. And, and I'm speaking as, as someone who's 
educated in in um, public health and um, and medicine and um, the cultural messages from restaurants from advertising um, even within our school is working against many of, of, of the initiatives that parents are putting forth to help educate their children so I see this bill as as one way of um, of restaurants being able to, to offer the healthy beverage as the default choice. It doesn't take away ultimate choice, but it does say this is where this is where the direction that we would like to be going in. And I think it it, it is consistent with what most parents are um, communicating to their children about. Thank you very much. Thanks for taking your time out for the day and informing our discussion of this bill. <coughs> well, thank you for linking me in. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. I think she said give the opportunity for a restaurant to offer uh, default beverage. Of course, they have that opportunity right now, but we don't need them all for that. That really they have not, that opportunity. That, um, that, that was not the import of her testimony. Oh. <laughs> no, I understood. You're comment there. Um, we're going to try um, Dr. Corbelin again. I have the name again. You have the right number, at least. He says his name with the voicemail, so. Where are people um, on this? I'm ready to vote. <sighs> so does that mean you're ready to vote? Yes, or you're ready yeah. to vote? No. <laughs> does it matter? I'm, I'm keeping it in close to my chest. Yeah. <laughs> no, we've heard a lot of testimony. Okay. This is, um, I don't need to hear more testimony. Is that your question? Part of my question is, do we need to hear more testimony? And then, you know, just a conversation about what our thoughts are about this <coughs> in terms of getting ready for um, the vote was not, um, what you call um, posted until tomorrow. Uh, oh, was it possible vote? Uh, um, but so I'm curious just in terms of where people are and what people are thinking about. I don't need to have anyone testimony. <coughs> I think that I guess that's where I am too. I mean, I'd like to see it, but I'm, yeah, you know, that's what I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to uh, say that. If everybody else is happy with what we've heard so far, <coughs> that's fine. And it's been a lot of good testimony, a lot of good reasons to do this from a health perspective, I understand that. I, I'm just conflicted on my underlying <coughs> philosophy, which is not to have too much intrusion from the state mm -hmm. to tell people what to do versus the 
the health impact. So mm -hmm. you know, I don't have to let people know. I mean, that is a conflict for me to try to, to uh, wrestle with that. Mm -hmm. But you know, and I don't know which which is going to win out yeah, right, and at this moment. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. So. I'm with Carl. Same reasons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I always take note when there's millions and millions of dollars involved in health care for obesity or, or whatever condition may be. In the case of cigarettes it's, uh, or tobacco, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's uh, pulmonary diseases, heart disease mm -hmm. and such. So, you know, my point before in my story was um, simply that, um, you know, uh, my daughter grew up to be healthy, uh, and, but not every parent is going to go through what we went through as parents um, and be able to uh, manage that. So I think some guidance in that area is a reasonable lift. I think that, uh, you know, just a, a default beverage <coughs> position um, in a restaurant, um, I don't think it imposes any great um, difficulties toward to restaurants. I think the health benefits and the possible uh, savings in uh, Medicare, Medicaid, and uh, health costs um, are probably worth the public policy in this nation. Teresa, welcome back. We're, we're having a stutter stop discussion on where we are um, around this bill, both Mariana and Carl talked about wrestling, wrestling with the um, concept of, you know, the health benefits, but also the don't really like regulations. And, um, and Chip just said he thought it was a good place to encourage balance and to do a regulation. And I just wanted to say to Chip, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to recategorize your your statement there to make it like you were supporting my position. No, I understand, Carl. Not a problem. Not, not, not necessary to explain. I understand. At the uh, at the rate of voluntary change on this, we would have uh, probably two more generations of people where we would have. Um, increased risk in terms of the health issues that are here. And I mean, I feel like we're not we're not eliminating sugar sweetened beverages for people's choice. They can still choose that if they want to. It's just uh, I don't I don't feel like we're I guess over regulating or over requiring. You know, they're just saying this should be the first option. So I'm okay with the concept itself. So, I grew up in a different generation when soda pop was in the same category with an ice cream cone. It was an occasional treat. Right. Um, and, you know, my mother. When I was little, my mother used to water my cokes, and somebody gave me one one day, and I took it home so that she could water it. <laughs> I'm not so vegan anymore. Um, <laughs> but, um, but when I, I, the first time that I encountered soda pop as the drink for lunch was when I came to Vermont. In the early 80s, I was going to all day um, legal education things, and lunch was included. And I remember, I remember, standing over this bin of cans of soda saying, what are these doing here? Where's the tea? Where's the, it was before, it was before the advent of Bob Blood. But I was just kind of appalled that there was this notion that when you had a sandwich, you also had a Coke. So, yeah. so to me, the idea that a meal is not that is, I've been living with that for a long time. But that's changed dramatically. I mean, you rarely go to an event where there aren't uh, many alternatives. Well, so at least they, but well, I agree well, with we have a chance to take a stand. I mean, <laughs> I mean, then we've been educated. So also this, I, I understand, Sandy, exactly what you mean. And that was also, that was back in the time 
when soda pop usually was, at least where I came from, uh, small bottles of Coca-Cola, the green glass bottles, which were six ounces. And that was like a huge treat. And that was a once in a whenever. So everything surrounding this has changed dramatically over the years, which is why I'm so conflicted. Because I do understand the idea of good public policy to help people, help <coughs> help them uh, be able to make a, a better choice, um, have it available. I mean, I remember when my daughter was quite young, toddler, the occasional outing, it was not infrequent to find a restaurant that didn't offer milk as a beverage, you know, which blew my mind because I could never, it just, times had changed, obviously. And now we've gotten to the point where it's, it's at least twice as much soda in one sitting. Um, and then that can be doubled or tripled easily during the course of a day, which is, so I'm conflicted because, yeah, I think, I think we do, it's in public interest to help <coughs> turn the tide a bit. Although, now, I thought Andrew McLean's um, testimony was interesting in that there seems to be a shift in people's <coughs> attitudes and what they're consuming. <laughs> I asked him to do a follow-up. I was real curious about movie theaters and restaurants to determine, in terms of their own, um, the, the distributorship, if, if restaurants and movie theater outlets have seen this shift, if patrons' buying habits have shifted at all. So he said he would see what he, he could make a follow-up and see if he can get me some information by tomorrow, because I'm just really curious about that. So. Madam Chair, yeah. I brought this up early on in this bill. I, I want to make sure that I clearly understand what the intent of this legislation is. And I'm just going to read the first sentence here. A food service establishment serving a children's meal shall offer, shall offer as a default beverage. And then it lists three different things. There's an or in between. So that means to me that two and three don't have to be offered. Mm -mm. Or, 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 one, two, or three. Yeah. One of those. Well, yeah, well, they all don't have to be. No, but they so have to all be available. It, so when I read it, it's a default beverage that says, number one, water, sparkling water. So that to me means they shall offer water in sparkling water. Or if they don't want to offer that, they can offer flavored water. Or they can offer milk. And if they don't want to offer that, they can offer milk. And if they don't want that, they can do they, so the only two things that they have to um, offer as a default beverage for my reading of this is water and sparkling water. Um, and, and that's what I want clarification. Okay, so Jacker, when we, we will have, uh, if, um, who would you like clarification from? Um, Will you take clarification from Katie, or do you, could one of us, I mean, who would you like clarification from? I guess um, the drafter of okay. Bill should be able to tell okay. us. Okay, so Katie. So, so rather than us no, trying to... I don't want to get get into Mullen and... No, no, no. And Ciroc and all them. Because, <laughs> because the, they, the bill has changed since they sponsored it. Correct? Right. Being uh, I, I mean, I think, I think what you are... I'm, I guess I, what I'm not clear is your question, what do these words mean? Yes. 
Okay. And so do they have to get do they have to offer anything other than water and um, sparkling water? Sparkling water. They, they don't have to <coughs> necessarily offer. This is um the topper because I'm not sure you're gonna accept what we're saying. Okay. Um they can mm -hmm. offer one, two, or three. They don't have to offer water. They could just offer milk. They could just offer fruit juice. Or they could just offer water. Or they could offer all three. Or two of the three. Can, can I? OK, then I'm going to ask the question a different way. I'm a restaurant owner, and I've got children's meals. Do, do I have to offer anything other than water? No. no. Dick, if, if the drafter agrees with that, that's what I'm. I'm thinking at this point, I got to offer two things: water, sparkling water, and either either water or the, then it gets into all the odds. So, so um, Katie is um, um, otherwise engaged. Um, we could get well, that, that's all I need and to and know. So she is expected back tomorrow, <laughs> and we are expected back tomorrow. <coughs> She's going to have a clean thing of this anyway. This is well, clean. We have a, we, at this point, we have not made any changes unless anyone is proposing um, a change. Yeah, she was making the change to S280. That was right, the right, we were right. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, but she's also, if as I she said, that, in, four, in four places. So. Um, if I get that clear, I'll manage it. That's fine with me, because that means the restaurant, all they have to do is offer water. Okay. As an alternative. Okay. And in the end of it, it says, <clears throat> nothing in this section shall be heavy creatures down from our customer. If the customer requests it. Okay. And I don't want you as my customer walking in and saying, so what do you got, water? Yeah, that's it. Well, I want to have, mm -hmm. I want have Diet Coke. I want my kid to And I'm going to say, no, we don't have it. No. Um, okay. okay. So we will we will wait and get that sort of um, answer. We had some, I don't know what people, uh, are, are there other um, questions that we want Katie to think about, um, give us answers to. Are there, is there any amendment that folks or any additions, subtractions? Okay. I know we were sent the part about the penalty <coughs> curve, that statute, I think you mm -hmm. showed up on my email here someplace. The what? The penalty. Mm -hmm. On other words, for enforcement. Okay. Well, that, all that is if you don't have water. You get $500. <coughs> you for the first. What? If you don't have water, you don't have I might. I might. <laughs> 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 way like what well, water my dishes in soda. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I think we, you know, we. Um, Watch it down there. <laughs> um, some of us are still conflicted, which is fine. With, you know, um, or you know, have to figure out for themselves where you know where they are. Chopper needs to. Um, That's all I need to. And Chopper needs to know <coughs> to, um, to know that. And um, so why don't um, we will plan on um, taking this up for a vote um, at this point with no um, and with no changes um, on Wednesday afternoon. You know Wednesday morning. Um, it along with um, S two eighty. In terms of S280, which is the um, Poverty Council Strengthening mm -hmm. Families um, Bill, you showed it. <coughs> yes, I have uh, sent it along to Representative Lambert, and she's reviewing it. I think she has any problems. She, in fact, said, oh, thank you for thinking of me. Um, I happen to see her in the hall. She seems to be fine. Okay, I understand. I okay. Um, um, and um, I will um, have not been able to I'll connect with Lisa Ventress, um, who is the executive director of Vermont Business Roundtable. I can't imagine she would have an issue with that, but I will um, double check that. We'll have that information. Um, so thank you. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, committee.
Oh, okay.